so now let's look at uh, jpred okay so uh, jpred is basically nothing but a, um, a protein uh, uh, secondary structure prediction server um, and its first it was into operation that is the first time it was developed was way back in uh, 1998 uh, jpred also incorporates something called as a jnet uh, algorithm okay and uh, because it algorithms uh, it it incorporates the jnet algorithm it is much more accurate uh, its predictions are much more accurate as compared to your chow fasman as well as uh, your core method uh, one interesting thing about uh, jpred also is uh, that it's also able to make it, it's also able to predict the solvent uh, accessible uh, accessibility and also your coiled coil prediction so these are the two interesting things which jpred does and also what it does is it's um, uh, as i said that it tries to, it matches your query sequence with uh, the known sequences with the, in the present in the database so basically it does uh, sort of a side blast here all right uh, in order to do the matching so that's why um, jpred is um, uh, is something very interesting so uh, you go to Google, you type JPRED, you click on the first hit, and yes. So again, like GOR4, this is the fourth version of uh, JPRED. Um, they keep on updating, they keep on adding something new to it. So JPRED4 currently is the best version for uh, carrying out any protein secondary structure prediction. So in this, uh, for your input sequence, I incorporate the uh, our query sequence, all right? So, and then I will click on make prediction. So what actually does is, as I told you, it um, it takes the query sequence and carries out a blast. Okay, so when it has done blast, it has given us um, 25 entries. So uh, these are the protein structures which are already present and available for P53. And it also has given you a blast E value score uh, for it. So if you want to understand what is an E value score and what exactly blast is, you can check my video, which is there on blast. Uh, but for this, um, this is already the known structures which are there. Now, what you could do is you can click on either one of them for you to understand how the uh, structure actually or what exactly is going to be the secondary structure because if the bla if the E values is close by, that means uh, um, the secondary structure of this and also your query would also be the same just because the E value is uh, less. All right. Um, but in this case, let's consider that we did not get good E values unlike this one let's say we do not get any good e values so what you will do is you just click on continue here all right yeah. so give it some time and uh, you will get the results yeah and we have the results here all right so um okay, now let's see what all is present in this uh, so uh, in order to view this so you can see view results in html all right and also in pdf so you can have multiple options let's go for view results in html okay let's view all the results in html for us to get a much clearer idea all right so yeah so now what has actually happened is what um jpred has actually done is it has um uh, taken that sequence and then aligned it with all the known sequences which is present. So this is your query sequence here and these are all the known sequences and can you see it has so basically it has done something called as a multiple alignment. So um, what jpred actually does is jpred predicts the secondary structures um, uh, which is present in your sequence by carrying out the multiple sequence alignment methodology. All right, so like this, it has aligned with all the sequences, uh, with most of the sequences, uh, sorry, uh, with which it is uh, showing good identity. And after that, uh, these are the results. So now let's look at how it has predicted the results. All right, so um, in this case, all right, so the JNet here, okay, uh, if you see here, the JNet is nothing but your finally sec final secondary structure prediction. Okay, so this here, this this is your finally secondary structure prediction. This one, 
All right. Now what happens is uh, the dash here. So these are not gaps. Let me tell you. Uh, the dash here stands for the coils. All right. So the dash here stands for the coils. The H here stands for the helices, and the E here stands for the beta sheet. Okay. So dash is the helix. Um, e is the beta sheet. H is sorry. A dash is the coil. H is the helix. Okay. The magenta color H is the helix. And E, right? E, what you see is nothing but your beta sheets, right? So the J net gives you the total uh, how your final um, secondary structure prediction is actually going to look like, all right? Um, the J uh, HMM here it gives you the HMM profile prediction. So, so uh, one is a prediction using your multiple sequence alignment that is your J net, all right? Um, so J HMM is the uh, HMM is it's using HMM that is hidden Markov model. It uh, it's able to predict um, this uh, the sequence for us. Uh, the, sorry, it's able to predict the secondary structures for us. And then you have uh, J PSSM that is your uh, Psi Blast PSSM that is position specific scoring matrix. Using that method, it's predicting. So try understand. So uh, uh, your J pred gives you the prediction for um, the secondary structure prediction for your query sequence using all the possible methods using the multiple sequence alignment method using your HMM method and also your PSSM method so all possible answers what is there it's showing in front of you and looking at all of that what you feel might be good again consider but even if you look at the sequence okay overall okay uh, it's showing the helix in this region which is correct here it's showing a little bit of beta sheet, but that's okay. That's that's very minor. But then look at the sections here. Right, this section is beta sheet. This section is beta sheet. This section is beta sheet. Right. Here there's a slight difference. Uh, here I think uh, HMM has predicted it as uh, turns. Here it's predicting as helix. All right. Um, otherwise, if you look at the most of the regions here, okay, most of the regions, it's predicting perfect. All right, and even if you look at the coils for all the three, it's the same. Okay, so that's the, that's why even though looking at all the three methods, I'll say um, uh, JNet is good. All right, so uh, yeah, lupus here. Now then, then there's another thing which is called as lupus. All right, uh, lupus here stands uh, for the coil prediction. So how many coils are there, and uh, how many? What is the prediction of the coils? Is what is being shown here. Now the thing is that um, if this your dash here means less than fifty percent probability for having a coiled coil, and if there was a C or a uh, capital C, then there's a ninety percent probability that uh, that region would probably be a coiled coil. But in this case, you can actually see that these are all coils. Which are there? Okay, so there's a less than fifty percent probability, which is good enough, and um, yeah, so that is what uh, lupus tells us—the coiled coil structure. All right. Uh, next, you have is um, the JNet uh, twenty-five. So the JNet twenty-five is nothing but the prediction of the burial region that is less than twenty-five percent solvent accessibility. All right. So all the regions which are marked as B. Okay. Uh, these are nothing but your solvent accessible region. Now, what exactly is a solvent accessible region? It actually a uh, solvent. So, the more the solvent accessibility, that place you can uh, you can actually predict that where exactly is it's going to be uh, where its pocket region is going to be. Now, like let, let's look at this case. Okay, can you see these regions where you can see a lot of solvent accessible region? Okay, so solvent accessibility um, uh, tells us. Okay. Uh, or now this is basically the burial region that is uh, there is less solvent accessible so that as the name suggests the solvent in this case will be water because you are talking about proteins right so in this case the water cannot access that particular region so that's why the solvent accessibility is less okay and that's why those regions are the hydrophobic regions basically and that's why it's also called as a burial region okay so uh, it's it's very good for predicting which are the burial regions all right so you have jnet 25 predicts that jnet 5 helps us to predict uh, uh, the prediction of burial which is less than 5% exposure 
So there's less, so it's in the buried region, but there's a little bit of exposure to it. So how less it's less than 5%, all that is there in JNET 5. In JNET 0, it's going to give you 0% exposure. That means there is 0% exposure to any sort of solvent uh, present there. All right. So these all regions are highly, highly hydrophobic regions. That means you can say they, uh, the P53 is in such a way that it's completely embedded inside. And, and let's look at something very interesting thing here. Okay, check out this region. Okay, there's a B here. There's a B here. There's a B. Uh, that's the burial region here. Burial region here. Burial region here. There's a burial region here. All the burial regions are in those places where there is some secondary structures. Okay, uh, very rarely you'll find any these burial regions which has exposure like zero percent exposure, which will be anywhere in the coil region. So these are the secondary structures where so. This way you can actually predict that this um, might be the places where the pocket region could be, all right? And uh, this could be of some significance when it comes to the function, right? So, yeah. Uh, and finally, you have the JNET REL, okay? So JNET REL stands for the reliability of the prediction accuracy. So it ranges from zero to nine, uh, where nine being, uh, the bigger is better. That is nine, nine is better. And zero is not that good. So uh, all these regions, okay, the one which it has predicted here, all right, the, that is the ones which are green are closer to nine. That means uh, the prediction accuracy here is good. So all the regions what it has predicted on this sections, okay, uh, most of the sections here, most of the alpha helices here, all right, um, yeah, major of the alpha, uh, even if the major of the beta sheets, except a few, okay. So I think something like if you consider this, okay, this is just one. So it's not sure whether this will be a uh, coil structure or uh, will be a beta sheet, okay. So there are very hardly few places where something like this is there. But on a major level, it's confident enough to predict which is a beta sheet on alpha helix. Now, finally, I would like to say that um, if you see this, as I told you, these are all coils, these are all helices, and these are all shapes. Can you tell me any other? So we looked at Chow Fasman and we also saw Gorfo. Can you tell me any other prediction tool which shows somewhat similar um, results to your JPRED? If your answer was Gorfo, then you are absolutely correct. If you look at GOR4, it has predicted a lot of coils and then some, some places there are helices and some places there are shapes, All right? So um, that's when I said, so like GOR4 gives us good results. Um, uh, but JPRED I will always consider is best is because it's based on homology. Now you go for GOR4 or Chow Fasmi, or mostly I'll say for Gorfo, okay, um, only and only when you do not get good results, good enough uh, alignment results in your JPEG, okay, um, uh, because as I said, it's based on your blast and your identity percentage and everything, but if you get bad results uh, using JPEG, then you can obviously go for Gorfo, right. So this was the secondary structure prediction using JPEG, Chow Fasman, and golf. So, hope you understood this tutorial for secondary structure prediction. Do not forget to check my other videos in bioinformatics and also do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye.